Good morning. Good morning. It's time to rise and receive. Welcome to your 10 minute morning send off designed to send you off on your day ready to receive what you most want by unlearning struggle. So today we're going to talk about your body, health, well-being and beauty. And if you don't know me, my name is Sonia Miller, speaker, coach, and best-selling author. And I am very passionate about teaching people how to receive by unlearning struggle. Receiving is actually the most natural thing in the world, and we actually struggle way more than we need to. Much struggle is learned. A little bit is natural to life, but much struggle is learned. And today we're going to talk about how we have learned struggle in relationship to our body. And it's uh, pervasive, especially in this culture. It doesn't matter what gender you are. I've worked with men and women around body issues. So if you are interested in unlearning struggle and really inviting well-being, health, vitality, beauty um, in ways that are much easier and that your body can become your friend rather than feeling like you need to whip your body into shape or figure out the right answer to solve your body issues, you're definitely going to like today's card. Okay. So um, what I do every day at Rise and Receive, if you're new to me, is I pull one card from my Receive card deck. It's a brand new in development and due to come out um, in, in the new year in 2021. I'll keep you posted on that. And that card will contain a receiving principle that I will read to you and we'll unpack it a little bit and then I'll send you off on your way with a willingness mantra, which is really the most powerful form of mantra that I've ever found. It has been life-changing for me and for my clients. And so willingness mantras actually invite things, experiences, manifestations that are better than you ever imagined. It is the energy of invitation, which is the alternative to the energy of intention. And so it really invites more or better than you could actually know or intend with your mind. So with that, I invite you to sit back, let these words wash over you as I read you the receive card from the receive deck, I should say. And today's card is receive well-being and beauty. <clears throat> receive well-being and beauty. Okay. The body-mind connection is undeniable. There is an abundance of scientific research and historical accounts of physical transformation that can only be attributed to states of consciousness. The placebo effect that saves lives. An incorrect terminal prognos prognosis that reveals the complete absence of pathology after death. Dramatic, easy weight loss after years of struggle when a relationship status changes in the direction of great relief. Your body believes your judgments and assumptions. It's highly responsive to your mental and emotional relationship with it. If you approach your body goals focused only on the outcome, whether related to your health, beauty, or well-being, you may struggle. An outcome-oriented approach, hard work, and willpower can absolutely produce results. However, if you exclude your mind and emotions from your strategies, it's quite common that your mood and self-image could vary greatly depending on the current state of your body. This is because an outcome-driven approach is based in lack. Your consciousness creates your reality. When your actions and strategies are driven only by the pursuit of an outcome, your consciousness tells the body, my body, as it is, is not okay. I must fix or change it. Your body believes you, and you manifest this exact experience. My body is not okay. I must fix or change it. This will continue for as long as you believe it. However, when you shift your consciousness from a fix-it approach to a fulfillment approach, you will begin to receive not only wisdom and resources that will answer all of your how-to questions, 
but you'll also create a harmonious space for your physical and non-physical self to embody joyful fulfillment. Next time you notice yourself wanting to change, fix, or improve your body, stop to consider how you want to feel with your body instead. How do you want to feel in your clothes, when you eat, when you look in the mirror? Then shift your consciousness towards fulfillment with willingness. As you become willing to feel satisfaction and fulfillment first, your body will invite joyful manifestations and naturally guide you to lifestyle changes that feel best for you. As you unlearn the struggle of changing, fixing, and improving your body, you'll expand in your capacity to receive the body you love and love the body you have. <clears throat> so I hope that that is inspiring you. I hope it's opening up doors and ideas and possibilities in your awareness about where you could go next in your relationship with your body. And what I'd like to do now is give you your affirmation for the day. And you know, here's the thing, wherever you go, there you are in your body. So at any time that you have any sort of a trigger, any sort of a desire to fix, change, or improve, you look in the mirror, you feel aches, pains, or symptoms, and you start to think, how do I, how do I, how do I, this is your opportunity to stop and practice this very simple willingness mantra. Try it on, practice it as much as you can. You cannot overdo it with willingness mantras, okay? Because that is the beginning of shifting your awareness, which is the key to everything. So here goes. I am willing to feel great in my body under all conditions. I am willing to feel great in my body under all conditions. Okay, so as always, I do not coach or teach on anything that I have not been through personally. My whole life, I am the guinea pig of, I'm the lab experiment before I try it out on any clients. And this is why I'm so passionate about what I do because I know firsthand that everything that I teach and offer works. And then of course it gets reinforced after, oh, 25 plus years of uh, coaching. So um, I'm particularly passionate about this topic because my own relationship with my body truly was the doorway into what I do for a living right now, okay? Um, as some of you know my story, I actually used to suffer from bulimia and eating disorder. I used to carry about 60 extra pounds of weight on my body, and the weight is never really the issue. It's how I felt about that weight, and it was how I felt in relationship to food and my self-image and all of that. So just to paint a little picture, many years ago, when I was at the height of this eating disorder, I would wake up every morning thinking about what I was going to eat. I'd go to sleep every night thinking about what I was going to eat. I was obsessing about weight loss. I was obsessing about how horrible I felt in my body. There was a whole bunch of self-loathing and I was living my own personal private hell. Okay. And so I spent many, many, many years trying to fix, change, or improve my body for a feeling. Now, I didn't realize this at the time, but that was, that was what was going on. And so as I began my journey around healing this, um, and boy, it took a long time to even, you know, own up to it because I was so ashamed of it, you know, so I really tried this all on my own and I really tried to whip my body into shape and control it. And while I didn't make myself um, purge through vomiting, I abused laxatives and it was an obsession from morning till night. Okay. And I feel some reprieves at time when I'd get things under control and then I'd lose control again. And this went on for years. Okay. Well, when I finally started to do the deeper work, I learned that all of this had nothing to do with food, my body, beauty, none of it. It had nothing to do with the physical realm, at least in terms of where the problem was. Those were all symptoms. And so that's the thing I really want to offer you is there is cause and effect in the physical realm, okay? But cause begins in consciousness. So again, you could use willpower, you could use, you know, all kinds of strategies and fix it approaches, but if you don't go to the root, which is your consciousness, 
those results cannot last. They rarely last. And here's the best case scenario. If they last, you're miserable because you're always operating from control in your life. And the moment you lose control, the moment you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, or your clothes are a little bit tighter, or a symptom shows up, then your mood goes down. So you could control your physical body. That's the best case scenario when you only approach it from an outcome uh, approach, um, but you'll be miserable. And then it goes down downhill from there, okay? so. As I started to do the deeper work, I learned that it was all about my feelings. It was all about my feelings. And as I started to learn how to get in touch with how I wanted to feel, not just regarding my body, because my body was just really the doorway to the deeper issues of loneliness, of, of, of pain, of sadness, all kinds of things that I never had a healthy outlet to feel. As I started to honor that, and then learn some behavioral things around food, which was truly secondary, okay? Learning how to really feed the emotional hunger, the spiritual hunger first. Then all of the other stuff started to fall into place. And not only did I heal from bulimia and shed a bunch of excess weight, um, which again, the weight isn't the issue, it was how I felt about my body, but as time went on and my body fluctuated and stuff like that with children and life and stressors and things like that. But as life progressed, the most amazing thing happened that I never expected. My body started to naturally guide me into lifestyle changes without my even trying. I found myself giving up gluten. I found myself giving up sugar. I found myself uh, eating lots more you know, vegetables. I gave up white flour. It was just happening. It was so weird. I gave up Diet Coke. I mean, it was just like one day I noticed, oh my gosh, I haven't had a a Diet Coke for a year and then two years. And those kinds of things, my body just started doing its own thing and leading me without any willpower effort. Now that's just my story. I have worked with many clients who have had similar experiences. And when they start to do the deeper work and start to release resistance around their feelings, and practice willingness, which is the doorway to everything, to inviting more or better than you could ever know or control, they had similar experiences. Freedom, weight loss, feeling more beautiful, their bodies just wanting healthier foods. It just happens. Now, it isn't necessarily easy, but it is simple. It's so simple because it's just awareness. If you're willing to work with your awareness, everything can shift. So, I hope that this is giving you some new ideas, some inspiration if you have been frustrated and struggling around this topic. And um, I'd love to share with you that a couple years ago, I did a program called Have the Body You Love, and it includes pre-recorded energy healings. It was three months and um, it's all recorded. It's all available to you as a home study program. So if you're interested in exploring more, I'm gonna include a link to that. Okay, and on that information page, there's lots more videos and and you can see what's possible and how the program works. But I just wanted you to know that there is a next step if this is something that where you'd like to unlearn struggle and receive with greater ease. All right, so with that, I'm going to give you your willingness mantra for the day. I am willing to feel great in my body under all conditions. All right, I hope you will comment, post your questions, You don't have to be here live to post questions. Come back, put them in the comments. I keep checking and come back and re-listen to this and see what shows up for you. Practice the willingness mantra and share what, what you notice. Awareness is the first thing you'll probably receive. And from that, more things can come into your life that will guide you on your way. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for being here at Rise and Receive. It's just, you know, it tickles me. I'm so happy. Um, And again, please like and share as it helps me reach the people that I'm here to serve. All right, everybody. See you on Monday. Bye-bye, everyone.